It's been a while since the last time that I revealed the tech that I rely on to run this business and my life. So today I'm gonna to delve into my bag and reveal my tech carry for 2022. Hello and welcome back to Marketless Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have and if you haven't subscribed, the button is just down there. I'm fascinated by all these everyday tech carry videos which everyone seems to be making at the minute and that's mainly because I'm a little bit nosy and I just like to see what other people use to be productive and run their businesses. So I can assume that the reason you're watching this is because you wanna see what's in my bag. So I'm gonna show you. This is the tech that I rely on for my business and my life in 2022. Let's get into it. Right, we're gonna start with the bag itself which is a recent addition actually, it is this. The, it's heavy because there's, there's a lot of stuff in there at the minute. Um, it is the Waterfield Designs Tech Folio Brief. It's $359. If you've never heard of Waterfield, they are this lovely San Francisco based company who hand make all of these products. They very kindly sent me this. This isn't a sponsored review. They haven't seen it before it went out. These are my honest opinions of this bag and I absolutely love it. Now normally I have rucksacks, so this is a different type of bag for me. It's a classic kind of briefcase slash folio type thing. So it's got these handles obviously that you can just carry around like a normal briefcase, but also it's got this big strap, which I'm, I think this might be an optional extra, I'm not sure. I'll put links to everything today as much as I can anyway in the description, including this. Um, but yeah, the one that I went for, it's got like a kind of waxed leather, uh, chocolate leather type thing, which you can mark quite easily, but that does give it nice wear over time. So I think it looks rather, rather lovely, actually. Um, it's not to everyone's taste and they do have different colors and stuff that you can check out, but it's just beautifully made. You know when you get something and the, the smell of it and the look of it, the feel of it, immediately you love it. It's just, I'm very impressed with it. So now this has replaced my my normal backpack uh, as my daily carry thing really so I put everything into this bag and it is amazing how much stuff you can get in here now there's loads of different compartments in here there's this kind of flappy thing at the front which has got this nice magnet on there I put receipts and stuff in there but you could use it for a number of things on the back it's got this kind of uh, little thing here, this little flap. And this is basically for suitcases. So if you're wheeling your suitcase around the airport, you can put the handle of the suitcase through here so this thing doesn't fall off. Nice. And we'll start, I think, with what's in the back part of this. So we unzip it. Very nice quality zips. So this particular tech folio brief is the version for the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is my laptop of choice for video editing. And it fits it perfectly. And actually, it even fits it in its inner tech case. So before I got this, I was using an inner tech sleeve for the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is fantastic. And the fact that that also fits in here with the MacBook Pro in it is just, it's just a dream, it's fantastic. It's probably a bit unnecessary really because there's a lot of protection in here already for the laptop. So it's got these kind of nice, padded insert so you can just put your laptop straight in without doing this but I'm a bit weird so just very quickly I'm going to talk about each thing that I get out very briefly uh, this in here I open this is the 16 inch MacBook Pro now this is my daily driver when it comes to video editing I made a video about this last week where I talked about the fact that this is for a very defined audience I think this laptop it's big it's a big big laptop if you've never used a 15 inch or a 17 inch or a 16 inch MacBook Pro before and you really want one please go and try one out in the store first get your hands on it get used to how big it is because it's an acquired taste I think but this is the M1 Max version. It's got 32 gig of unified memory. I spec'd it up to the, uh, the best possible M1 Max with all the graphics cores and stuff. And it's an absolute beast. So every video I produce on this channel, the podcast, the lot, goes through this laptop. I could not live without it in terms, well actually no, I could live without it because I do still have my Mac Mini behind me and that is more than capable of editing, editing 4K videos. So, but yeah, I'm running a tech channel. I need to review this stuff. So that is my big daily laptop of choice. Next in here, what else have we got? So we also have two iPads. Two iPads is too many iPads. No one needs two iPads, but I've got two iPads. I've got three iPads actually, but that's for another story. And the two iPads of choice, the first one is the iPad Air fourth generation uh, with the white magic keyboard case cover thing. Now, I don't use this a huge amount, I'll be totally honest. I do use it a little bit for writing, so I use an app called Ulysses to write my blogs on, and occasionally, as a break from the MacBook Air, 
it's quite nice just to grab this and sit there with it on your lap or take it to the coffee shop and, and get writing. I've said quite a lot about this iPad Air 4. I think if you're looking at either this or the nine point whatever it is inch um, iPad Pro, I think this is a better buy personally. Um, but yeah, so that's my kind of mid-sized iPad of choice. The other iPad, which is my definitely my daily driver that the iPad that I use more than any other is the iPad mini, uh, the iPad mini six. Now I'll leave a link above to my full review of this. I absolutely love it. Um, it's completely converted me to digital note taking. So I use the pencil, I use an app called Notability and I have a paper-like screen protector on here, which makes it feel like paper. I just love it. I love everything about this little tablet, the size of it, the fact it feels like a proper little journal. Like I say, go and check out my review of it for more of me gushing about how wonderful this thing is. Okay, what else do we have in this compartment here? So, ah, Kindle. Um, I recently bought the latest Kindle. Now this is the Kindle with, I think, 32 gig of storage on it. I'm doing a video soon that compares this against the iPad mini for reading. And I think that's quite an interesting little comparison, but um, I'm really enjoying reading stuff on the Kindle at the moment. Uh, if you're interested, I'm reading Dave Grohl's book, The Storyteller, which is brilliant. Stay tuned for my little video on the Kindle versus the iPad mini. What next, right? <laughs> There's a microfiber cloth. Uh, if you're a YouTuber, you get through a lot of these because screens need cleaning. Although the eagle eye will notice that I don't always clean my screens very well, uh, but they're always quite handy. Uh, what else do we have in the back? This is great. This waterfill case has all, apart from the big compartments here for your iPads and your, your laptops and things, it also has these little, three little pockets here and a little pen pocket as well, um, just to put other stuff in. Now I've not put anything else in there, I don't think. Oh, there is something else in here. There is this. Now this, if I quickly open it, will feature in a forthcoming video. This is the iFi Audio Griffin, which is a portable, DAC and headphone amp. The idea with this is that it connects via Bluetooth to your computer or your iPad or your phone, and then you can plug in your high quality pair of headphones and listen to lossless audio on it. I've only got this yesterday and I've only set it up yesterday, so it's early days for it, um, but it's quite a cool little thing. It's not cheap. I think it's about 500 quid. It's, it's quite expensive, but I'm going to try this out as a portable lossless audio device and, and just see how I get on with it. Now you might think that's already quite a lot in this particular bag. No, it gets interesting when we unzip the front part of it. So this whole front section unzips all the way down and that didn't work. Unzips all the way down and flaps open. Now, before I show you everything that's in there, there are two things here which I'm gonna take out and show you very briefly. Let's put that over there. First thing are these, which are the Bose QC45s. I reviewed these a little while ago. I'll link above to that particular review. And in that review, I said that they are a great pair of headphones, but I still preferred my Sony XM4s. I've been using these more than the Sony XM4s for the last couple of months, and I've kind of fallen in love with these. Um, the Sony XM4s I still think are a fantastic pair of headphones. They're down here. That's part of the reason I've not been using them because these have just been at the house. So I use these every morning. Every morning I write my blog. So I write my daily blog for the Marcos Reviews website and my Medium account. And I quite like to sit there and listen to kind of you know, spaced out kind of calming music to kind of get me into the writing. It's all a bit it's rubbish really, but it just makes me calm. And it's very early in the morning when I, when I start writing. So I just find that having noise cancelling headphones on and the right type of music gets me in that kind of focused working. I've been using the Bose QC45 for that. The noise cancelling is typically brilliant Bose. Sound quality is pretty good. The Sony's are better for it really, for sound quality, but it's still very good. They are at the moment my daily headphones when I'm at home, so sorry Sony. The other thing I have is my beloved MX Master 3 mouse, which has its own little carry case. I love this carry case. I am, I found this just on Amazon one day and thought I'll give it a go because I was taking this mouse to and from the studio and to home, so it just made sense to protect it a bit better. I found this little hard carry case virtually indestructible and it fits it perfectly. So you pop your, your mouse in there and away you go. Uh, the mouse itself, I've talked about this a lot. I'll link above to a video where I talk about it in a bit more detail as part of my favorite MacBook Pro accessories. The MX Master 3, if you've never heard of it, never used it, and you're a video editor in particular, get one, trust me, they're brilliant. Okay, so back into that big compartment at the front of this bag. If we lift it open, as you can see, we can zip it a bit more. As you can see, 
there is so much space in here for stuff. First thing, uh, memory cards. As a video creator, I get through shed loads of memory cards every single week, it seems, and this is what I store them in. This is a waterproof, kind of damage-proof, hard case for them. And I shoot on SD cards. Now I use 64 gig cards, the Extreme Pro versions. And the reason I use only, only 64 gig is because it prevents me from putting too much stuff onto one card. So I don't end up shooting three or four videos on the same card and then losing that card and losing all the videos. I like spreading them across different cards. That's the reason I do that. So this is absolutely essential. MagSafe battery pack for the iPhone. Barely use this, to be honest. It's just, um, it's just here. I, I just don't have much of a reason to use it. I'm not away from power for that long. I've used it probably two or three times since I had it. Um, there are better, cheaper options than this. Now, I also have two things I could not run this channel without, which are these two SanDisk external SSDs. Now, these are the one terabyte Extreme Pros. They're quite expensive, but they are very, very fast. I've got a couple, and these are my kind of live production SSDs. So all of the videos that I make go through these. All the raw footage goes onto them, my Final Cut Pro library goes onto them as well, and I just use these in conjunction with that 16-inch MacBook Pro, and they're flawless, they're brilliant. They get very hot, that's one thing that bothers me slightly. They haven't failed me yet, shouldn't say that, but bunch of cables, can't get too excited about these, but just very quickly. They're mainly USB-C cables, I love USB-C, and of course I have to have the odd lightning cable in here because Apple insists on using lightning for things like the AirPods and the iPhone. Charge I do have, obviously, as you would expect, a lot of, a lot of chargers in, well, actually only a couple of chargers, uh, USB-C and USB-A, can't get too excited about them. Uh, in this pocket as well, I have my AirPods Pro, which are in this fairly horrible kind of carbon, fake or fake carbon fiber case thing. The reason for that, I'll show you. If I just take this off, the reason I use this case is because I had my AirPods engraved. And I wrote about this a little while ago on my blog. I regretted it immediately as soon as they arrived because it looks dreadful. Look at the font they use. It's terrible. But the AirPods Pro, I use them all the time for listening to podcasts. They're my workout headphones. Sound quality is great. The noise cancelling is pretty good, bearing in mind they're just earbuds. These are one of the best things that Apple makes. They're so convenient as well. Absolutely love them. There's an AirTag in here. I do have air tags in a few things, including this uh, folio, and I've not really used them. Although, again, it's nice not to have to use them because that means you're not losing stuff. But um, yeah, I just stick an air tag in there just in case. There is also a little hub here, which is a USB C to USB A, and also. Uh, SD card and mini SD card. I very rarely use this these days. This is when I didn't have the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which obviously has its own built in SD card slot. But occasionally, if I need to connect something via USB A to the laptop, I use this. An XLR cable in here for the mic. And this is quite handy if I need to attach the mic to the camera, which is quite rare, but occasionally happens. There's also a random SSD in here. This is, I don't use this for any kind of production stuff in terms of video, uh, but it is used for some audio work. So some of the stuff I do in Logic, if I'm making music and stuff, I've got some samples and things on here. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, this is a standard HDMI to mini HDMI. This is for the monitor that I occasionally use on the top of certain cameras. Not very exciting. Uh, there's a screwdriver in there, you don't need to know about that. And when you buy these tech folio briefs from Waterfield, they also give you these. Um, I don't think these are optional, double check. They're like little cable tie things uh, made from leather. And yeah, really nice, really nice and solid connection and again just that lovely waterfield feel to them that's pretty much it guys that is my daily tech carry the only two things i haven't spoken about are my apple watch series 6 which is sat on my wrist here i do like the apple watch and i think as i've said recently i've kind of flitted between this and my casio g-shock and i'm looking forward to hopefully a rugged version of this later this year we'll see if apple does that and the other thing which i obviously rely on every single day is my iphone 13 mini it's not here at the moment, it's over in the corner somewhere, but I will leave a link above to the review I made of that a little while ago. But that is all the stuff that I rely on daily for the business mainly and also just my, my life. The thing that has brought all this stuff together is this Waterfield Tech Folio Brief. There are lots of other options out there, obviously for these kind of bags. The thing I would suggest is find something that you can get as much stuff into as possible without it being too difficult to carry around. I would love to know from you though, what's the three things that you rely on every single day tech-wise that you could not do without? Let me know in the comments.
Now, if you've still got some time and you fancy a look around this studio, keep watching for a link to my behind the scenes video. But until next time, thank you so much for watching this and I'll catch you next time.